first uh, stab at a webinar here, and if uh, hopefully everybody can hear me out there as we kick off the PTA Global uh, webinars with co-founders and contributors. Uh, my name is Dan Duran. I am the Executive Vice President at PTA Global. It's an honor to be here today with Rodney Korn. Uh, Rodney was a great mentor of mine. He's a great friend of mine, and I wouldn't be here without him. Uh, so I'd like, Rod, if you could take just a second to introduce yourself. Well, I am Rodney Korn, as Dan said, and yes, we are friends, believe it or not. Uh, we don't look anything alike, <laughs> but I've been in the industry for about 30 years now, a little over 30 years. I always tell people I started when I was about three. That usually gets a delayed laugh, so I'll, I'll let that sink in. Uh, I've gone through a, quite a journey. So I started educating in 1999, but before that, I was doing a lot of strength and conditioning. I was in clubs. I was a personal trainer. I was actually in clubs before personal training was really personal training. So I was just working the gym floor, and I've gone from that all the way to working at NESM as a director of education from 1999 to about 2006. And then I worked internationally with a UK-based company for a bit with a good friend of mine. And then I was with PTA Global from 2008 to 2015 as one of the co-founders and uh, monkeys, knuckleheads uh, of, of, the, of the five that were brilliant people. Hopefully you get a chance to hear and see from them as well. And then now I'm the director of education for LACO and also working as a co-founder for SOMA that we may talk about later. Yeah, excellent. Thank you so much, Rod. Yes, um, one of the, 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 the things we want to really offer the folks that are out there and that I want to hear uh, either again or learn as well uh, more of is a little bit about the evolution of, of personal training. Now, you mentioned you started when you were three. So that's fantastic. So we have we can go go back a little ways here, uh, but kind of the evolution. You know, you've been involved with it for 30 years plus, like you said, and uh, there was probably certain traits, skill sets, characteristics, and so forth that that enabled a trainer to be successful 30, 20 years ago, 30 years ago. How does that look compared to what the traits, characteristics, skill sets are today? And then the you know, the 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 last piece of that is what's it going to look like moving forward because obviously these are changing times so some some perspective uh some of your perspective on that would be wonderful yeah and great question and i'm going to keep this real simple because this could be a really big expanded conversation and please realize those of you that are listening that there's a lot to this but i'm going to try to keep it very simple first and foremost i believe the things that have always been important and I'm gonna say there's two primary ones. One is knowledge, one is communication. Let me break that down a little bit. First off, we have to have an understanding of what we're doing. What is it that we're trying to accomplish? What is the outcome? What is the goal? And that's intimately entwined with communication. When I say communication, that's how we speak. And there's so much about how we speak, whether it's the rate of our speech, it's the tone of our speech, all the different things that go into component of speaking. It's our body language which is massive that a lot of us don't understand. Um, and, and I'm gonna throw in something as a caveat, and this is really about awareness. One of the things that, that we don't do very good in our industry is we're not really aware of who we are and what we're doing and how we're doing it. Uh, and that's huge. Uh, and so it's really about what you're saying and how you say it. And then that's, that's the medium that conveys what you know. So if we convey if we have knowledge and we have the ability to communicate, and within communication is really presentation, how do we look and how are we presenting ourselves? Are we professional? Do we look professional? Do we come prepared? So our preparedness, there's all these things, sub, sub things that I talk about and really embed in communication. And your communication is your, is your medium to convey the, the information and knowledge that you know. So you really have to have an understanding. Now, that said, those are the topics that I believe are fundamental and foundational to be successful. However, as we progress in time and we progress in what we know and understand, those have to evolve. So just because you were really good 20 years ago and you have a great personality and all that stuff, doesn't mean that you can't still evolve. And because you had a good understanding of what, what was happening 10 years ago, 15 years ago, doesn't mean that you still have a good knowledge of what's going on currently right now. And specifically relative to the environment that you're in, what type of 
fitness professional are you? Are you in more of a medically based? Are you in more of a of a, a functional fitness base? Is it more of a CrossFit box? Is it more of a gym? Is it is it a studio? Is it your own? Is it someone else's? There's all these variables that go into that. But ultimately, if we have knowledge and we have the ability to communicate, we're willing to expand on that. I think that's where we start. Moving forward, as we expand that, I think two main things, those, what did we just talked about, I think two other things that are going to come to life, and there's going to be a lot of other stuff, but again, keeping it simple, technology. Do we understand the technology that's out there? Do we understand the importance of the, the technology? And do we understand how it can be utilized and what's effective? I know people get on things and, ah, oh, I got all this stuff, but we need to be aware that, again, depending on the environment that we're in and depending on who we're working with, a lot of, we have access to information now as a consumer more than ever before. So consumers are coming in and they'll have information sometimes that you won't because we can't know everything. And there are some really smart consumers that go looking and don't be fooled by their age. So I've worked with lots of people over the age of 60 and they'll come in and ask questions like, where did you get that? So it all has to do with understanding what technologies are out there. What are, what are the apps that people are accessing and using? What's the, the purpose behind the app? What is everything from computer technology to app technology, our phones, and then the, the different mediums that we have with social media, et cetera. And I also think another one, and this is a much bigger conversation, so I'm going to try to get right to the point, is, is finding a niche or niche, depending on where you're watching this. Uh, we, we have always been kind of a jack of all trades. Uh, there is really no other industry that has a jack of all trades unless you're a handyman. And there's nothing wrong with being a handyman. And in the personal training industry, the professional fitness industry, that can have a definite place. But I believe if, if it, as the future comes, there's going to be more of a niche, a niche or niche market that's going to start emerging. I'm, I'm already seeing signs of it. Uh, things like recovery and regeneration, reco re reconditioning, that's gonna be a huge thing coming down the pipeline. It's already big, people just don't really understand it. And it's really an expansion of wellness. Uh, wellness is typically thought of being yoga or Pilates, and that's completely, completely wrong. There's so much more to that. So that's gonna be this, this whole wellness and how do, I, how do I recover and how do I take care of myself? Uh, there's the performance niche that has has always been around, but people aren't really maximizing on what that means. Uh, CrossFit has bring, brought a huge influx and influence into our industry. Uh, like it or not, regardless of what you think about it, CrossFit has had a massive impact on our industry, and we should learn from it because there's many valuable lessons to that. Special populations are huge. Right now, we're getting close to, as is a 2020, our older adult population is going to be the largest it's ever been. And these people are looking for it. And I can attest to that personally. Uh, I was working before I got the job at the Lego. I was working full time, well, kind of part time, but with a group of people who were predominantly over the age of 60 and they want help and they want to get better and better because they want longevity and independence, massive. And then there's always the corrective and medical. So I think technology and, and finding a niche are gonna be really huge. Find what your passion is and, and go after that and you can maximize that. Doesn't mean you don't do other things, but that I think is gonna be something that comes down the pipeline here pretty soon. Uh, excellent, great, great wise words. And for those of you listening, if uh, this generates some questions, you'll see in your control panel, the ability to type a question in there. And as we're rounding out the webinar, I'll, I'll grab a few of those and we'll answer as many as we can uh, to be able to address anything that, that pops up into your head as we're, as we're going through this. So thank you all again for attending. Um, something I really was hoping you could talk a bit about, Rod, that uh, was actually the biggest eye-opener for me when I met you and when I, I learned from you and where I was sorely lacking, no pun intended, was recovery. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, I came from a mindset that uh, the harder you work, the better you got. And uh, you know, you, you you sleep when you're dead type of a, a thing. And, and I don't think it's that uncommon. Um, I, I, it certainly wasn't working well for me. And uh, you introduced me to that balance between strength or, or stress, call it, uh, and training and recovery. 
and and finding that balance and the importance of recovery, which is something which uh, you uh, you know definitely were a huge part of creating the education in PTA Global, but then also uh, moving on into SOMA as well is is that component that recovery component. So if you could speak to that quickly. Yeah. So there's a there's a massive interplay between strength and recovery, and and essentially there everything that we do is intimately connected and is a continuum. There is no isolation, whether it's talking about human anatomy, physiology, the mental, emotional, it's all, it, it's all together. And then that's the, that's the hardest thing for people to realize is, well, you mean anatomy, physiology are separate? Ah, no, they're absolutely intertwined. And everything from our mental and physical is all intertwined, emotional, all intertwined. So I have a process that I call the three A's. And it's awareness, action, and accountability, and there's, there's variations of that. But in order to actually do something or understand something, we have to become aware of what that is. And the first part about strength and recovery is being aware that they are connected. They are intimately one and the same. You really can't have one without the other. And in order to get strength, if you don't get recovery, you won't get stronger on a sustainable level. People can always go out and get strong and get massively strong, and then they break down. And we call that God's periodization. He, he'll, he'll take you through periodization whether you want it or not. So that's the, that's the cycle that we have to do is be aware that you have to have recovery in order to achieve your goal, whether it's weight loss, whether it's performance enhancement, whether it's strength, whether it's power, it doesn't matter what it is. If the body can't recover from the stress that you're placing on it, which you need to have stress, then it will not give you the adaptation in a sustainable, maintainable fashion that you need and want. So First off, become aware of that. And then second, it's about programming. It's realizing that your programming should have built in recovery. And if you program correctly, recovery is part of the programming. People just have this ramp where sometimes they just go straight up the hill. But how many people can climb a hill that steep? Very few. You try. <laughs> you try and we watch. And we've all done it. I mean, as a, as a long time ago, a competitive bodybuilder, you, you just go, 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 go. But everybody breaks down. The body will break down. So you have to bleed it in. And, and, and interestingly, this was the whole premise behind what we built at PTA Global with the exercise and stress management course. We did that specifically. And, and I'm biased because was part of this process with, with the other five co-founders, which was awesome. But I'm biased with that that course being one of the most powerful tools that a trainer can get and access because when you understand the effects of stress and then understand how can I quickly ascertain from my, my client or members what's going on today, then I know how to specifically modify and adjust that program. And that's the most important thing. You can periodize programs out the yin yang and you can have the most perfect program on paper, but that person walks in and they've had a horrible day mentally, emotionally, they've had a bad night's sleep, they've had all these things, that instantly changes how their body's going to respond and what their results are going to be. And that's fact. And that's, that, there's so much research behind that. So if we can ask them a few questions, find out where they are, and make some simple modifications, we can dramatically impact people. You are probably one of the best testimonies. And, and when, you, when you talk about your story, how you trained, what you did, and then when we trained together, I didn't do anything fancy. All I did was follow, I followed the PTA global system to an absolute T. And you, within three or four weeks, like, ah, I know what you're doing. <laughs> I was like, this, it, it works, it works. But that's the, the most important thing is that you have to build it in, you have to be aware that it exists and you can't deny it. Uh, and, and you you need it from the beginning, you just don't know it. I'll, I'll go back to Rob Retton, who, we know very well. He had a post where he was doing some chrome rolling. He goes, now I need this stuff. It's like, no, you needed it 20 years ago. You just didn't want to do it. And so now your body's telling you, if you don't do this, I will shut you down. Yeah. So if we, if we build it in for people now, especially in the, the 18 to 25 to 30 to 35 range where you think you're invincible, if you build that in now, man, when you hit 54, which I just hit, you don't have to worry about all of those nagging things in at the nth degree that you you would if you didn't do any recovery. Big thing. 
Well, thank you, Rod. I, I, I always love hearing you talk about that. You're so passionate about it. And of course, like you said, it's uh, I'm a walk and talk an example of of the, the, the impact it can have on a person's health. Um, now, you mentioned the when, when, when you introduced yourself, you know, some of the things that you've done in your journey in your career, which has been, uh, you know, very, very uh, unique and uh, certainly helped so many different trainers, people coming into the industry and people already in the, in the industry. Can you share just a little bit? Because so our viewers may know you from NASM when you were director of education. They may know you from PTA Global as a co-founder and the many videos that, that you can be found on. They may know you from uh, co-founder of Soma. You know, they may know you from what the, the great work you're doing at Aleco. So can you give us just a little bit of a trajectory and and how that that's, you know, morphed over the years? Yeah, well, the transition has been actually phenomenal. So NASM was a, an absolute fantastic uh, experience. I mean, the people that we work with, uh, being able to work with Niels Bruce, and which was my mentor, he brought me into the, the company in 99. And then meeting Mike Clark and getting Mike to come and work for NASM and bringing his information there completely opened my eyes to how the body operates and things that we we really need to understand and, and, and look at. And being able to create a systematic process so it's reproducible, that was huge. And that's why one of the biggest things with, with both NASM and PTA Global, that's how my brain works, is we need to have a system that's simplistic and can reproduce things. So that was a, a, a really big eye opener and just a great experience to be able to build education that follow a process that was uh, helpful. Um, moving from NASM into PTA Global was PTA Global for, for, for me personally and for the, the other five co-founders was really an extension of what we had learned to that point. So at NASM, I had learned a ton. I had developed a lot of information. I had compiled a lot of information. I had practiced a lot of that information. So at NASM, I trained people in the NASM methodology. And I used that, that OPT model in variant ways that nobody uses. It's not shown or seen. Um, and I'm not saying that to pat myself on the back. I'm saying that there's so much depth and breadth to that, that particular model, but we use it in so many different ways with different clients, but it was never actually seen. And that was always like, man, people need to see some of this. So when we got to PTA Global, that was one of the biggest things. And one of the co-founders, Bobby Capuccio, who was at NESM with me, is just absolutely brilliant. I mean, he's probably more brilliant than people should be allowed. And he's got arms that are bigger than they should be allowed. So, uh, but- True. In, in that in that transition, he was always the communication guy, always about motivation, understanding communication, how to communicate. And then the NESM was kind of like, yeah. But then as we moved into PTA Global, that actually took on the whole, the whole breadth and depth of what we wanted to do. We wanted to give trainers the ability to communicate. And that's why we put in a communication or the behavioral assessment, the PDQ, instead of a movement assessment. Because if you can't get somebody to actually buy into what you're doing and build a rapport and have the trust and be able to create an established communication network, then you put them in a movement assessment and they're just like, this is, I don't get this. It's not that you can't use one, but that's why we, we eliminated it. So at NESM, we brought it in. We were the first ones to actually put a movement assessment in and everyone else followed. And then at PTA Global, we took it out and we said, we need to have behavior science. And guess what? Everyone else followed. They didn't necessarily take out their, their, their movement assessment. They all started talking about behavior science. So all the other organizations now had this, but what they didn't have that we had was it was embedded. So behavior science is embedded. It's practical behavior science. There's all the science, there's all the tech geeky stuff you want, but it's embedded into the actual session. But in the we PTA Global, there was things that we were doing and, and the original plan of PTA Global is how to expand all of the contributed authors and the contributing educators and some of the stuff that we were personally working on is what is what the growth pattern was going to be through PTA Global. That didn't quite take off the way that we had hoped because of uh, factors that are irrelevant. And so Ian and I, Ian O'Dwyer, who's one of the co-founders in Australia, he and I were real close and we were doing a lot of stuff with uh, recovery type things and that's where after i had left pta global he contacted me reached out and said hey 
do you want to finish some of the stuff that we kind of started? And I said, I'd, I'd love to. And so that's when we started putting together SOMA. And SOMA was just basically recovery generation tools to get people to be able to recover and maintain tissue integrity so that they can continue to do what they want to do, no matter how intense or how, how long they want to do it. They have the ability to do that, and we built that in. And then that was going uh, real well. We were getting things done, and I was specifically working with, with clients utilizing. So when I was at NASM, it was all practical. I, I used it on people. When I was at PTA Global, I used it to a T. You're an example. And when I was with SOMA, that's what I did. I trained for two years with this process and, look, and went through it. And by the way, that's where I went to the niche. That was a niche that I did in a club, and I was the only person who did that. And so where did these people come? They came to me for that. And I had, I had other trainers, clients, that I would work with in this capacity so they could go back and do what the trainer was best at and do that. And it was a great rapport builder within the club and made really good money, too, for not working very much. And then I had got a call from, from Aleco, and they were looking for a director of education to to help organize and structure a process for a fantastic company, family-owned company, has a long history, uh, has, has a great history. If you go onto the Aleco website, just aleco.com, and look at the actual history of the story, it's brilliant. I won't go into it because we don't have time. But it was just a journey of, I'm about educating and about passion and about practical education. And that's where this kind of went and it's taken me through this, this transitional journey, which Sometimes you don't know where your journey is going or why it's going in a certain way. You just you just have to follow it. Uh, I'm glad you did. And one of the, the the things that's been pretty cool for me to see on my end is following you your feeds on uh, you know social media with the work you're doing with Aleco and seeing the folks out there. And I'm forgive me if I'm saying this wrong, but predominantly doing Olympic type lifting, but they're on the ground on the walls applying soma. And yeah. it's, it's, you know, it's for everybody. It's not just for the older population like you were just referring to. It's for everybody. The, the techniques that I learned from you, I use almost daily, definitely before every training session. Mm -hmm. So uh, brilliant stuff. And it's great to see, you know, you, you just never know how these things are going to spread and, and how that influence will influence other things. It's really nice to see that, that pool of athletes and instructors and educators utilizing a, a tool as, as powerful as that. So. Yeah. Very, very good. Um, you know, the the I want to take a moment just because I want to be respectful of everybody's time and uh, plug, you know, grab a couple of questions here uh, that, that have come in. And I've got one right here that uh, says, you spoke about consumers who are educated when seeking a service. How can we as trainers reshape the minds of consumers that are oversaturated with information, and I'm going to go ahead and say this is from Kinsey. So thank you, Kinsey, for that question. Um, does did that make sense, Rod? Yeah. So Kinsey, if I can just uh, clarify, I believe what you're saying is consumers are going to come to you. They're going to have all this stuff because there's all kinds of things on the internet, and they're going to pull it together and say, "Hey, I've heard this, I heard this, I heard this, I heard this." And first and foremost, this and this is stuff that we we taught in PTA Global. So I'm I'm going to pull stuff right out of PTA Global because that's why we put it in there. First and foremost, never invalidate what they come to you with because we don't know yet, unless you really know this person and they're giving you the information and they're telling you, we don't know what their bias is, what it's not. And so if we say, oh, that's crap. And immediately they're just like, well, that's, that's what I really had been doing and that's what I'm thinking. And now you've just kind of invalidated them and you just brought them down. You basically just hit them in the head or kicked them in the gut. So what we wanna do is listen to them and ask questions. So again, one of the processes is if we can spend more time asking and kind of digging through what they want. So if they come to you and they have three different things, I, you know, I want to try this and I, I, I have this and I, I want to do this and this workout looks good and these exercises look great. Say, so so that's fantastic. I'm first and foremost, I applaud you for looking at that. That's a, that's a lot of work that you've done. You've put in a lot of time for that. So I respect that. Um, can I ask why you're looking for these particular and what about these particular ones was really that really stood out to you what was it about that what you want to do is number one and I'll, and I'll give you the truth number one is you're getting them to kind of explain what's going on so they can hear it themselves but so that you can gather information because as as a trainer you have to be a little bit of a detective sometimes what what are they saying what's the information is there a theme to what they're saying can i ascertain what they're looking to get 
before they've actually even said anything. So they're going to hear what they're saying, and you're going to hear what they're saying. But it's also giving you time to think. So the more that they're talking, you have time to think about, okay, how do I respond to this, and where are they coming from? So you need to watch how they're saying it. It's the exact same process we use in a PDQ. When someone's telling you, do they light up when they talk about something? Do they get really emotional? So if they're really excited about something, you say it, and that's the thing you point to and say, that's crap. You just, I mean, you just annihilated them. So if they're really passionate about that, realize, okay, this one they're really passionate about. This one, not so much, and this one, not at all. Then start to weave yourself through that process. What about this one did you really find that was important to you, that meant something to you? What about that? And then get them to talk about that. Because you may find that it's, wasn't as big as the deal as I thought it was, and they may find that it maybe wasn't as big a deal as I thought it was. Or you may find out, wow, you know what? That's really important. There's really not that much, that much wrong with that. I can bring that in. Because not everything that comes in is going to be bad or wrong. Um, everything has a place. I truly believe that. It depends on where at in the process your particular client is at that time. So if it's an exercise and the exercise is way too big, then 3D see that thing down and say, awesome, if that's something you'd like to do, how about we work out a plan to get you to that point? Would that be helpful? And always leave them with, would that be helpful? Would that be beneficial? Would that, be, would that work for you? Because then they're like, well, they're listening to me. They didn't negate me. And they're actually helping me create a plan for that. And now we can move forward. So that's what I've always tried to do. And, and I, I know what you're saying because I've had my, some of my older adults and they'll come in and they're talking about, should I do this? Should I do this? Should I do this? And so it's a, it's a weed. It's a game. It's like, okay, well, what about these? I, I did the exact same thing I just told you. And nine times out of ten, the answer will arise. And you don't necessarily have to know everything. Um, but as, as fitness professionals, we should be at least abreast of a lot of the information, as I already talked about, of what's out there. Not that you have to know everything, but just kind of understand, especially relative to your environment and your population uh, or clientele, if, if there, a lot of us have a very congruent clientele. Some of us have people that are kind of all over the place, but most of us have a fairly congruent clientele. Just know the information that may exist about that. Hopefully that was helpful because it's, it's big, but it's just let them tell you, ask them the right questions, and then get to a solution that creates a pathway between you and them and doesn't negate something. Oh, brilliant, brilliant. It, it, I'm reminded when I first started uh, learning from you, when you pointed, pointed out to me that when a trainer... Uh, walks up to someone and tells them they're doing an exercise wrong. Right. And I, I remember because I'm I'm very visual. You said that's when the wall comes up. Yep. And there, anything you say, they're on the other side of that wall, and they're not listening. To, you're not, they're not listening to you anymore because you basically insulted their intelligence. Yeah. And eighty percent of the people is that you're a fool, and they just won't say it out loud. Twenty five percent of the people of that about eighty percent will tell you. They <laughs> Well, I could listen to you all day, Rod. And uh, again, going back in time, I remember waiting for you to come in the gym just so I could could ask you a question and learn from you in person. And uh, probably one of the most frustrating things you would say is it depends. And here I am 10 years later, and that's usually my answer. Uh, so I could listen to you all day. I'm sure our listeners could as well. But being respectful of time, I want to go ahead and just kind of close wind things down here. If people want to learn more from you, Rod, or follow you or connect with you, what's the best way for them to be able to do that? The easiest way is just connect with me on Facebook. So just Rodney Corn Facebook, and then also through Instagram, it's just Rodney underscore Corn. And usually, whatever's going on or what I'm associated with, I'll be posting through that. So there'll be a lot of things coming out with with Alego that we're just building some new education right now, and Soma stuff, and then uh, some personal things that are actually coming down the pipeline that uh, may have some interest for some people. Excellent, excellent. And viewers, you can always uh, post on our PT Global Facebook community as well. You know, tag Rod in there. Rod follows that and posts on there, and that's another way to be able to connect. But, but certainly want to be able to connect people. Uh, at the conclusion of the the webinar, within about an hour, you're all the all the folks that that signed up here are going to get an email, and we'll be able to actually watch it again uh, to be able to to access it. You will also receive a uh, a discount code that Aleko is gracious, uh, 
pardon me, graciously offered us uh, for a 25% discount in their store. So if you want to uh, pick up any of their equipment or clothing, that, that will be emailed to you as well. And we're also going to be sending you a code for our new Fast Track course, which is an eight and a half hour course, really for the trainer to quickly to build their business. Uh, it comes with a 90 day playbook, learn the PTA Global System Sciences and Tools in a very abbreviated version, all the brilliance that, that Rodney was talking about, kind of condensed into a short course so that you can ramp up your business. So that's coming as well. Uh, kind of with that, you know, to, 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 to finish on time, I wanna once again say thank you, Rodney, for, for spending your valuable time with us. Uh, just, sharing your wisdom with with our listeners and all the folks who are going to get to access this and i'll let you go ahead and close the webinar if you would yeah and i just dan first and foremost i thank you thank pta global uh i want to thank all the co-founders that are all part of this so my answers are a conglomeration of all the people that, that i work with but ultimately it's about you guys this is all about you and everything that we do pta global was stood for everything that i've ever done in the industry has always been consumer based. It's been personal based. It's been a, a trainer based. It's always been about you people. And without you, there is no us. So I just want to thank you for taking your time out of a busy schedule and a busy, busy day and in, in, in a kind of a weird situation society wise right now. So just thank you for taking time and I deeply appreciate it. So thank you very much. And I look forward to maybe hearing from you or seeing you soon. So yes, yes. Thank you. Thank you all. Thank you, listeners. Wash your hands. Yeah. Stay safe, stock up on toilet paper, yeah. until next time. Thank you very much. Bye-bye.